Leading on um, from when, when we were talking about um, when you first uh, got into directing, uh, you were one, uh, you were first uh, Asian British director, of course. How, uh, speaking in terms of, um, you know, representation and, uh, and acceptance, how did that progress as you went along in your career as a director? Did you see more opportunities for people? When, um, as the years went on, how, how, how did it change as the years went on for you? Well, you know, this, th let's get into the idea of when I started mm -hmm. and where we are today. Mm -hmm. Because today, a whole new generation of people are thinking in a totally different mindset to when I started. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important to know that because there's a kind of nostalgia right now about the past and with it goes the glamour of the success of Doctor Who, for instance, mm. right? And that's fine. And I've more or less swum along with it and enjoyed the kudos and the praise. But behind it, what I really find that I'd left behind and possibly I shouldn't resurrect but we're talking about it <laughs> was that it was a very hard swim against the current mm. and I was putting up with a lot of implicit self-doubt that myself was surrounded by what I concern with what concerned me was the basic uh not antagonistic but critical atmosphere that had launched me into this particular position. Um, I was very privileged to have been given the tra training by the BBC. I was aware that I was the very first person to be doing this from my ethnic background. Mm -hmm. I was very proud of it, as was my family. So the whole sort of glow of it seemed to be terrific around us internally and the practicality of it was quite different because mm -hmm. actually each episode that i directed was full uh, was fraught with mm -hmm. all sorts of dangers and, and objects physical as well as mental i already i think mentioned the circumstances under which doctor who was made yeah in very lean budgets at a studio that was totally inadequate with equipment that was antique. It was a real challenge where people basically were asking me to prove myself. And in order to do that, and we're talking about the first four episodes of a script that I had no faith in to start with, mm. uh, then followed by seven episodes of Marco Polo, which we have to agree was done under much more sympathetic circumstances because by now the show was a hit. Yeah. But the hit came as a result of a lot of pain. And so I don't want to go on being glowing in my nostalgia. Yeah. I want to now at this stage, and I've not really done it before. Yeah. I've always basked in the glow of nostalgia. People have always asked me, what does it feel like? How do you feel? And I see, I feel great. But the reality is I'm now talking about the, the actual mechanics of putting that show together, which were actually beyond horrendous. Yeah. And people have forgotten about it. Why not? Time's gone by. However, here am I, and I've used that metaphor like I give birth and the child is taken away and grows elsewhere. So <laughs> the adult now thanks me, but has moved on. I'm now possibly even the grandparent. But as a grandparent, <laughs> I'm aging myself, but the reality is I feel kind of bittersweet. Mm. And I, I want people to know that because in this day and age where everybody thinks that we're now uh, in a multicultural society, I'm sorry to say that as we speak, things have happened recently which people should be ashamed of. And we're now talking about Black Lives Matter, but racism is still rampant under the surface. 
and you know however successful we are and let's face it there are many more asian south asians from my part of the world doing very well successfully mm-hmm. in both the media and the law and finance there's still that degree of doubt that underlies their successes and i'm sorry i don't care who they are and we all know who they are they are operating under the vigilant eye of criticism and that goes from the highest to the lowest mm-hmm. and i am actually very critical of some of the people in authority from my part of the world mm-hmm. who actually seem to be disguising their own insecurities and i know where that i want to talk about that basically because you know it's all very well being some kind of vague legend now and no longer uh, on the surface of it all in fact a lot of people don't even know who the heck i am in terms of doctor who the fans do there are many people who read and they follow but i'm now talking about my wider career i uh, i'm yeah. not just talking about doctor who that launched my career by the way and i'm very grateful for that yeah. um never going to say anything about that i'm also grateful for what i got from it the bbc i'm very grateful and very loyal to the bbc in spite of my being critical and i think one has a right to criticize the very people that educated one of course and so i'm grateful for all those things but i'm sorry to say that things have not changed that much in terms of perception hmm. that's why we see ourselves where we are today i suspect that's why brexit happened it's got mm. nothing to do with economics yeah and that bothers me mm. and the underlying privilege of the people giving us the orders today especially at a time of pandemic and the chaos that's ensuing makes me feel yet again that i have to say what was the real thing and let's take the tarnish let's take the glitter off the actual of ball and let's look at what actually exists so that's where i'm coming from uh, but again a lot of people might say well goodness me why are you complaining you're far better off than a lot of us and i i can agree i am better off than a lot of the my my compatriots hmm. but i have to make a statement and that's what i'm doing now at this moment that's good and considering it's been what about 50 nearly 60 years and this is the first time that you can mention it it says a lot about the development of the world i've never really now. yeah i've never really talked about this aspect mm. of my career trajectory i have to say that a lot has been good yeah. uh i would also say <laughs> interesting enough that my career took off to the point where i was invited to go to america i didn't go there seeking my fortune but i was asked to go and over there um interesting enough i was treated in a totally different way i was introduced as a british indian director but the british was very uh, prominent in their reference mm-hmm. to me however interesting enough again through the uh, early years things were going swimmingly until there was a situation which occurred i e uh, iraq and saddam hussein and my name as you can say stopped helping my career trajectory for me second the so. mood of people over there turned as well hmm. so from being a british indian and given a lot of credit for what i was doing there was uh, another hill to be climbed from my part hmm. uh partly because the name put me into a whole different category which is interesting because i never thought of it that way hmm. but uh, americans tend to have an enemy and in this case it turned itself towards the middle east hmm. and what happened then so in a funny way my career was jolted in its progression but it that was a stall hmm. until 9/11 and that's when it really came into a crashing halt in fact i was in toronto shooting a movie for television we were research- we were actually wrecking for uh, locations when we heard about the twin towers mm. and um 
it was interesting because the horror of it was, of course, enveloped all of us. We somehow managed to struggle through the production. At that time, things stopped, literally. People, were, There was no communication between. I was shooting in Canada, by the way, that I would mm. make that point. We were in Toronto and um, simulating, pretending it was the United States, which is what often happens. A yeah. lot of production companies got to Canada and pretend it's America. And um, so I was shooting uh, 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 America in Canada, then this disaster. So then we had to go back across the border. And it was interesting because you actually cross the border in Toronto hmm. to get into the States. There's an immigration situation. And I, I, was totally, I was just trying to get on and finish the work after this whole horror. Hmm. And then one of the actors said to me, are you going to be all right going back in? And I said, what do you mean? And they said, listen, um, I think we're going to have to help you. So one of the leading actors, actresses, who was actually very well known, hmm. went up to the head of the immigration department, U.S. Uh, and said, uh, would you be very nice to our director who was coming through in view of what's happened? He's an incredible talented guy and we all love him please give him as much uh, of a welcome as you can and you know at the time I thought oh how very nice but in fact she facilitated something hmm. that could have been serious um well-meaning but well-meaning yeah, but it had a significance yeah the fact that she and of course, but, but by the time I went through, they were all welcoming me with open arms because um, yeah. um, of her reputation. Mm. The, the movie, she was a well-known star, so television star. So she got me in without any aggravation. But do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. My life has been circumscribed by certain circumstances. And I am now fully aware of it. I'm not complaining, but I'm explaining. Mm. A lot of people probably say, well, what about happens to be if you're black or you're Jewish? And there's a lot of prejudice against all sorts of people, you know. Mm -hmm. But it's the silent prejudice that's, that you can't fight. Yeah. And all I can tell you is that after 9-11, my job offers literally started to dry up in America. Mm. Wow. And actually, I was fortunate enough to have people who actually knew me. I ended up actually to, picked up uh, by a friend of mine who was the head of film department in the Academy of Art in San Francisco teaching film students. Mm. And for four or five years, I actually ended up teaching film students uh, up in San Francisco about filmmaking. Mm. So my career kept going, mm. but if you can imagine what one has to deal with in these circumstances, of and course. I'm fortunate enough to have done enough mm. so that, you know, um, I can still say I'm waving, not drowning. 